Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm returning to my Cold Waters Let's Play series. This is part 12 in that series, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at a Tomahawk land attack cruise missile attack uh, that I launch against Arc Angle. Uh, that's the, not the only thing you'll see in this video, but that is really the uh, highlight of the footage. This is taken from a live stream from a couple of weeks back. Um, what I am going to say is I've been doing a historical narration series where I talk about various U.S. submarine classes uh, as well as some technology developments. In our last video, we looked at the Mark 37. And while this might be a logical time to talk about the Tomahawk land attack missile and how that plays for submarine I think it's a little bit premature in that sense. So, you know, where we've left off with U.S. submarines is just on the dawn of the nuclear era in our history. But I don't want to go too far into the Cold War without also talking about Russian submarines and without uh, also talking about um, sort of the early U.S. Cold War or early U.S. nuclear boats, that is. So we've got the, Na we've got the Nautilus class come out, which is the first nuclear boat. But then very shortly after that, we get into the Skipjack class, the Persian, the Permit, all of these other boats which are in the game and are available. Um, so what I think would make more sense is we'll play through the remainder of this campaign, just kind of relying on the live stream audio, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, start a new series, a 1968 campaign, to look at the early U.S. nuke boats. So we can kind of do what we did with the Mark 37 episode and show you relevant footage uh, to the, the boats that we're talking about. In addition, I'd also like to start looking at the Russian boats. I have not talked about them much at all yet. I did do a video on the Foxtrot class. But other than that, I really haven't talked about the development of Russian submarines in the Cold War either. The game will be adding those at a later date, but I don't know when. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably download, there's a mod available which allows you to play Russian submarines. So I'll probably download that mod and also start talking about Russian submarines. So what I'd say is at this point, the series has come to a conclusion for the early Cold War boats, the immediate post-war period uh, in terms of U.S. submarine development. And now that we're getting into the nuclear development, I'd say we're kind of getting into the early to mid-Cold War, and that'll be kind of its own grouping of videos using a different campaign uh, and also the Soviet uh, history as well. So we'll kind of, it's all ar uh, overarching in this historical narration piece, uh, but we're going to look at um, you know, kind of it'll divide it up into maybe three or four different parts where this campaign was just looking at the immediate post-World War II era. The next campaign will look at Russian boats uh, and kind of looking at them through the Cold War. And then we'll go back to U.S. submarines and look at, you know, the initial nuclear boats, the kind of early to mid-Cold War nuclear submarines, and then go into late Cold War. So I imagine this kind of being three sub-series within an overarching series. Uh, and we're just kind of wrapping up on the first one. With that being said, I don't want to leave you hanging on the Let's Play. So what we're actually going to do is we're in the process of trying to maneuver our submarine in toward Archangel. Uh, we got intercepted by some enemy vessels here before we even got there. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and drop back into the live stream audio for all of you. Uh, so, you know, for the next 30 minutes, just kind of sit back and enjoy as I uh, attempt to launch a Tomahawk cruise missile attack. What I will say is that uh, this was my very first attempt. So there was, in my commentary, there's certainly going to be a lot of confusion about, all right, how do I do this? Uh, how does this work? I think I did a decent job of figuring things out and I hope it's entertaining for you all to watch, uh, but this is not an expert launching a Tomahawk attack. This is very much a novice uh, launching a Tomahawk attack against Russian land targets. Uh, the current battle that we see fighting in front of us is not yet there. We got intercepted before we got to our firing range, uh, so we'll have to fight this fight. This is only a short few minute engagement, uh, but then, spoiler alert, uh, but then after that we will... Uh, uh, move in and, and uh, target the Soviet base at Archangel. All right, guys, I'll meet you guys back at the end. Thanks for watching. And also, please don't hesitate to leave your thoughts on my approach going forward. And if this is kind of the, the direction you'd like to see, see the series go, it's probably the direction I'll go anyway, but I'm interested if any of you guys have any feedback or thoughts about trying to make the actual video you're watching more relevant to the, uh, to the discussions uh, that are occurring. Okay. Now, with that being said, I will go ahead and drop off and allow you to listen to the live stream audio for the remainder of this 30-some-odd minute video. All right, guys. Thanks again. Catch you at the end. Okay. So our sonar classified that enemy vessel instantly? 
the cresta. That weapon's probably going to break its wire. Based on the enemy's speed, assuming it maintains speed, there's a little blue dot here indicating this is where it'll end up. I'm having it just a little bit short, so the hope would be that it'll acquire... Uh, and I'm using homing so they don't instantly know where I'm at. We're going to adjust our course a little bit. So if they do shoot back at us... I really should have... I don't know why I didn't hit the up button for it to acquire a surface target. You should have... When you click on this, this kind of indicates you want it to run down, flat, or up. I should have done up. So, enemy car class. So again, I'm using the, the passive sonar because of their surface vessels, so the hope would be that we're able to... Um, that we're able to detect these guys, or, you know, get, get our shots off more covertly. It's kind of the thought. All right, so it just launched second torpedo. We told it to go to the surface. I think this is the first one, though. It's in pretty close. Looks like it's probably acquired its target. Second one we ordered to go up, but I don't think it will until it acquires. Again, so far, just these. No Russian torpedoes in the water yet. And see, this enemy surface combatant may not may not be any of the wiser. And there you go. Hit. Phantom submarine hit. The cloaking device. We hit it in spite of the cloaking device. Oh, God. The crust is still alive. All right, so we're adjusting. We're using the wire to adjust the range on the Kara. So we'll go ahead and fire. This guy's probably dead in the water, I imagine. But we use the we use the fact that the wire was still there to adjust the torpedo's aim. So hopefully it still hits. And we'll switch this to active because I'm not sure how much noise this Resto will be making. And it will most likely lose contact with us, so we won't be able to adjust because it's on such a sharp angle. Take a look here. Enemy's turning away, trying to run from the torpedo. Doubt it'll get away. There you go. Enemy hit. These guys are not sinking. That's weird. Every other time I've fought, these types of vessels have sunk in a single hit. See if the enemy drops any torpedoes in on us. So far, nothing. Now, I'm hoping they're at least dead in the water. He's still making nine knots. Hmm. I did not know that they nerfed uh, torpedo damage in the most recent patch. So this guy should go active soon. Looks like he's got a reasonable angle to acquire. Let's set him to a surface run. This guy's got to be close to going active. Really hope he is, because I, I want I want to sink this guy. So far, just the two torpedoes in the water. All right, so Cerner's active. It looks like he's climbing to his target, angling on. The other torpedo is probably needs a little bit of an adjustment, so we'll go ahead and adjust it this way. Which again, it's nice that I still have the wire on that one. This one doesn't look like it'll need the wire. He looks borderline dead in the water.
Not dead in the water, but close. Anyway. Noisemaker will confuse our torpedo temporarily. But I don't think the enemy is moving quick enough to be able to permanently evade us. You can see we regained contact on it. Sw oh, we're diving down. Now we're swinging around. I'd like to zoom out a bit for these, these kill shots. Boom! Down she goes. All right. Rest is sunk. The other torpedo we have is closing in on this vessel, which is also on fire. The other vessel has dropped a noisemaker. Our torpedo still has a wire, but I'm not sure if evasive maneuvering as part of acquiring its target will, uh, will break the wire or not. It appears to reacquire. And he's coming in for the kill. Zoom out a bit. Boom, there it goes. All right. Night kill shot there. That was pretty. So two enemy dead surface vessels. We can leave combat before that chopper figures out where we are. And we sunk them. All right. Excellent initiative, but that was not your mission objective. Yes, I know. Well aware it was not my mission objective. Ooh, get out of the sight of the enemy patrol aircraft. Closing to than 100 miles of arc angle. New sonar contact, bearing Sierra 1. Um, I'm not quite sure how to use tomahawks. I don't know if anybody knows. <laughs> Um, but we're about to we're about to find out. Um, status report. Let's load. Let's make sure we've got all torpedoes. We can always swap things out once we get in position. Um, Yeah, we'll figure things out once we know a little bit more. Everything's 100% stores. Um, we're moving at 10 knots, so I right-click to, to move into the engagement zone so we're at, in a better position. Now, there's no thermal layer or surface duct, which is going to make things difficult. Um, I think it's deep near near the port, though, so we should have some room to maneuver. I don't see a floor condition here. Um, there's no close to, which I assume means that there's no contact, per se. We'll go ahead and man battle stations. Rig ship for ultra quiet. I think, do we want to, do we fire into the blue zone or do we fire into the port and we have to get, we have to fire from the blue zone. Does anybody know? So basically, right now, where I'm at, I can just fire from here into the blue zone, just aim for the blue zone. Yeah, I agree, Just. It makes no sense for us to be this close into shore. The tomahawk can hit from like a thousand kilometers away. It really doesn't make sense. Hmm. You guys are giving me conflicting reports on whether I need to be in the blue zone or I need to fire from the blue zone. Well, Total War, the issue is I only brought 10 harpoons with me, so if I fire into the blue zone from out of the blue zone, and then that, that's not right, a single mistake, and I fail the mission.
let's look it up in the manual. Um, weapons, tube setting, and guided wire, guided guided missiles. I don't see anything about harpoons yet. Um, vertical launching system. Weapons in the VLS do not require reloading. We don't have a VLS yet, but that'll be cool when we do. Uh, let's see here. Deployment zone is the blue zone. I assume that means I have to fire from the blue zone. Yeah, I saw Jive Turkey's video and he failed the mission. I thought he was in the blue zone when he fired, though. Okay. Alright, let's see here. Is there a mission type? Land strike missions. You must return to your home base to acquire the number of land strike weapons specified in your orders. Then sail to the destination where you need to fire the weapons into a deployment zone marked on your map. Missiles reaching the deployment zone will automatically be terminally guided to their target. Note that the enemy ships may be in position with the ability to shoot down the missiles and route. This mission type will only be given if your current submarine is capable of equipping land attack missiles. This makes it sound like you don't have to be in the blue. Fire into the blue zone. Um... Okay. Yeah, all right. Well, I guess we'll we'll try this out. Oh. So, so just like this, right? Whilst what is active? I mean, I don't have any contacts. I don't, I don't, I guess we'll see. I should have brought extra missiles. Let's watch this one. We'll see. If it gets shot down, we fail. But we'll see. No, just no, I can't try both because I have ten missiles and I have to fire ten missiles to hit their target. So if it gets shot down, it's game over. Uh, it looked like there was an active ping from behind me. I think I just saw an active ping from behind. I wish I could track the missile on the map. That would be useful. I could have fired into the blue zone from the blue zone, but I'm pretty sure that's what Jive Turkey did, and it didn't work out for him, so I'm trying something different. We'll see if they make it to their targets. So far, there's nothing en route. I think we will change our heading a little bit. Not that five knots is going to get us away all that quick. But if we take a look here, we don't have anything. Alright, so he's moving inland. This is the, the, the lead. The lead missile here. You'd think it would fly a little bit lower so it would be harder for it to... 
get hit. How freaking far away are we? It didn't seem like we were that far away from the target. And damn, this is not a terrain mapping missile. It should be much lower than this, shouldn't it? Who's been banning you all night? I don't think anyone's been banning you, Peter. The only I only saw Elena ban one person. Looks like those just changed their heading. Alright, let's level out a bit. Then I'm going to launch another salvo here. It does look like we've got active pings, but they're all behind us. Alright, I think this might be the target here. We'll see what, what it hits, if anything. Oh, she's diving in. Boom! That was a hit. Good hit, good hit. Alright. Boom! So hopefully if the enemy are behind me, they can't shoot down from behind. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Our moss behind us. So we don't. I think we fired half of ours now. We've got the. Let's see. We've got the moss. We've got one, two, three, four. So we've got four in air. One hit its target. You can see some smoke on the horizon, it looks like. These are the new ones. These these guys are closer. Again, there's the smoke, I believe, from the target area. This one appears to have found a target. It's angling in. Boom! Fuel tank. Oh, shit. You're an enemy chopper. Enemy bombers, too. We're right off here, so they're definitely clued into us now. Let's adjust heading a bit. Hopefully they don't hear us. We do, do we have a layer to hide under? No layer. Great. So three of our... Torpe or three of our tomahawks have hit their target. The only concern I have is if they shoot down tomahawks. Plus, I like watching them go in, right? And I'm going to have to fire off another... They've got a sonar buoy behind us. I'm going to have to fire off another set of tom... I, I've got five more to fire. <laughs> Alright, so all three are off so far. You can see the smoke exactly where we're located. 
where the enemy's going to come over and drop a sonar or a torpedo right on that smoke. They can obviously see where we're located. That's a sonar buoy right on top of us. This one appears to be headed in. All right, some more fuel tanks. Another one coming down. All right, let me get the like, damn it, I want that other harpoon to load. That other tor that other tomahawk to load. I've still got one more tomahawk to load. As soon as it does, I will be off. Got three more tomahawks in the air. We've got one moss out. They're searching, but they're a little bit off-center. So they're searching over here. The second we launch those, they'll, they'll be all over us. Looks like there's two enemy choppers and an enemy may. So, we're going to fire this here. Alright. Definitely an enemy torpedo is down. I didn't see where it came down, but I saw there's one in the water. Alright, let's dive... Waiting to find where this damn thing is. I hear it. Oh, there it is. Alright. Shit. Depth charges. All 100%. Let's relocate a bit. What's the floor here? 400 feet? Level out a bit. It's going to acquire us for sure. Maybe not. Seems to be trailing in circles. We only have the one? Did they shoot one down? No, I fired off all my tomahawks, guys. But I'm worried that they may have shot one down. Oh, maybe not. Oh shit, there's another torpedo down. There's no way that one's not going to acquire it. Bring the boat up a bit. Drop a noisemaker. Did it buy it? I don't think so. Shit. Go under, go under, go under. Oh. Scrape the paint. Alright, now let's dive. <laughs> let's not breach. All right, dive. Use some ballast to drop us before we breach, and we're cavitating lovely. All 
Andy's closing in again. Drop noisemaker. Down, down, down. Turn. And he missed again. How the fuck did that miss? It didn't look like he bought the noisemaker at all. Oh boy. Let's turn inside the torpedo. I'm losing track of what my, uh, oh shit. That's a bad angle to try and evade from. Ugh! There's not enough depth here. Ballast tanks are damaged. The aircraft keeps dropping sonar buoys, but they do eventually run out. I don't know what the number is, but they do run out at some point. I think the answer is to just kind of keep headed this direction. Maybe wait for the aircraft to run out of sonar buoys, I'm not sure. And hope that no weapons get fired at us. Which right now I am hitting the three key to make sure of. Good morning, Flying Dutchman. Welcome from Holland. We just launched a TLAM strike on a Russian port, took some damage, and are now trying to extricate ourselves from this rather dangerous situation with Russian aircraft all over. They fired two torpedoes at us. Uh, neither torpedo sunk us, but they did damage us somewhat. So the aircraft doesn't have any torpedoes left, but they are continually dropping... Oh, shit. Oh, we can leave combat. Quick, leave. Okay, so... All right, so we escaped. Well done on a successful land strike. In initial reports indicate extensive damage was sustained by the target. Further orders to be transmitted on the downlink. All right, Archangel hit. Military installations in and around Archangel Soviet Union have suffered extensive damage in what witnesses have called a massive attack by, con condu by conducted NATO. What? Numerous fires kept burning throughout the night and seem yet to not have been brought under control. Spokesperson from the Soviet Union had cried out, accusing NATO leadership and officers of war crimes and other atrocities against civilians, populations in the wake of recent attacks. Denying such claims, the Pentagon issues a dismissive statement, calling the accusations nothing more than Soviet propaganda. Recent Soviet port activity indicates enemy ballistic missile submarines are being re ready to sail from Gramika within the next few days and likely attempt to transit beneath the polar ice caps, after which they'll be free to strike North American targets. You are to infiltrate the northern bastion, intercept and destroy them before they can do so. If you fail this mission, you may not have a home base to return to. Advised enemy ballistic missile submarines likely escorted by one or more attack submarines and surface forces. Okay, this really sucks because we need to get back to port to repair our damage. The problem is we don't have the ability to get back to port to repair our damage because if we do so, we'll probably fail the mission. The problem is, with our current damage, we'll continue flooding if we're below a couple hundred feet, which will make fighting boomers and other vessels very difficult. Alright everyone, thanks for tuning in for yet another episode of the Cold Waters Let's Play that I've been playing. As I said at the start of this video, I will be returning to historical discussions in the not-too-distant future, uh, but this series is wrapping up, and I did want to just kind of show my Tomahawk land attack strike. Uh, I'm thinking about starting a series with the, and there will be one more episode in this series, but I'm thinking about starting a... Uh, series looking at Soviet submarines because I've kind of gotten to the point logically where with U.S. submarines in my historical series we're right up against the start of the nuclear era when things change a lot and also the 68 campaign allows you to see a lot of those early nuclear submarines so I'm thinking about starting a 68 campaign trying to anyway and showing off some of those boats while I talk about the U.S. nuclear submarines in the early uh, nuclear era at the same time, I'd like to show off some Soviet boats, because I've gone 10 plus years into the Cold War, and I haven't talked about the Soviet developments in submarines either. So what I may do is I may kind of start parallel series, one with the Russian mod, uh, which allows us to see the 
Russian submarines, at least as they are now. The game will be adding those later, but um, thinking about uh, doing a, a series with the Russian mod and then also a series with the U.S. boats in the early Cold War for the 68 campaign and kind of getting a sense of... Um, you know, what uh, what to, to look at there. So at least you're watching relevant craft to what I'm talking about. Uh, but with that being said, that'll be the end of this video where we successfully launched a Tomahawk cruise missile attack. Hope you guys all enjoyed, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.